So how safe is it these days to wear a Rolex in a large metropolitan American city? You might hear of a story of someone getting mugged or robbed of their Rolex, and hearing a shocking or vivid story like this might make you overestimate how often this really happens. So what are the chances of actually having your Rolex stolen, and should that prevent you from wearing a Rolex out in public? I was planning to take the whole day and drive down to New York City and take some photos with my M11. So I took this chance to see how comfortable I would be wearing my Rolex out in the city, in the subways, on the boats, and in Times Square. I'm a fairly cautious person, so I'm fairly good at reading the risk of the situation. Uh, I may be right, but I may be wrong. I narrowed down my choices uh, to these four watches. The two-tone, I think, uh, matched my outfit the best, but I wasn't quite ready to flash yellow gold in downtown New York. And the silver dial uh, also still looked a little bit too shiny with the bezel and polished center links. So it came down to the Oyster Perpetual or the Explorer 36 and I decided to take my most uh, mildest uh, Rolex uh, which is uh, kind of plain and fits into almost any situation. I would say uh, most people who might even see this watch uh, don't even know it's a Rolex. Since it was summer and very hot uh, it was also a perfect uh, time for me to see what everyone else was wearing. Uh, I was also wearing short sleeves, so my uh, watch was totally exposed also. It seemed like about half of the men were not wearing any watch at all, and out of the half that were wearing watches, uh, half of them were wearing an Apple watch, and the other half uh, were wearing a uh, more affordable fashion watch. I only saw three other people wearing a Rolex uh, during the whole day, and I'll get into that later in detail. My first stop was to see the Statue of Liberty. Uh, this is my only second time seeing this in the last 10 years, but it's still uh, my favorite spot in New York City. Even seeing it off in the distance uh, still gives me goosebumps and coming up closer uh, even makes it more uh, majestic and inspiring. For me, the Statue of Liberty is a symbol of what uh, America could be. It serves as an ideal of tolerance and equality and justice for all people, uh, regardless of background. And it also makes me think of the thousands of people who uh, fled Europe in the late 1800s and this was the first sight uh, that they saw of America. Riding on the ferry towards the statue, I felt totally comfortable wearing the Explorer. I didn't feel self-conscious about it at all, and everyone was just minding their own business. And the vast uh, majority of them uh, were tourists, uh, not even from New York. And from the voices I overheard, most of them were German or French, or uh, South American, um, Asia, or even uh, African. The next stop is uh, Central Park, and this is another treasure in New York City. It's a free open park where everyone can visit uh, regardless of their uh, wealth or status. It's an oasis of calmness and quiet and greenery um, away from the noise of the city. Parts of it have a carnival type experience, uh, a touristy type of experience, which I wish it didn't have, uh, but uh, most of it is open grassy spaces with shade trees and paved walking paths. One thing I noticed this time especially 
is that New York is a young city. A lot of people in their 20s outside enjoying the day. And again, I felt totally comfortable wearing my Rolex at Central Park. All day I didn't see anyone uh, looking at my watch, uh, but I did uh, see about a dozen people uh, catching glances at my camera, uh, partly because it was strapped across my chest and I was one of the few people taking pictures with the camera instead of a phone. Maybe I should have been more worried about my camera since it cost more than my Rolex, but I still think most of them didn't know uh, what a Leica was and probably just thought it looked like a camera that might be an old style film camera. My third stop was Brooklyn with some views of the Brooklyn Bridge uh, looking on to Manhattan. Once you get close to the water things become uh, quieter and more beautiful and uh, as the sun sets uh, people are drawn to this area. Uh, with the stunning views of the bridges and the Manhattan uh, skyline. Uh, again, this was a beautiful sight to see and well worth visiting this area. So those were the three highlights of my trip to New York. Uh, three beautiful and magical places to see, uh, which I highly recommend. Uh, but I think things went downhill from there on my last two stops. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, let me mention the three Rolexes that I saw during the day. Uh, the first one was on an older Asian gentleman uh, walking on the sidewalk on the Upper East Side uh, with his wife. He was wearing a, a two-tone uh, yellow gold date just with a Jubilee bracelet. And this was the previous version with the hidden crown clasp. And he was wearing it with uh, shorts and a button-down short sleeve shirt. Uh, and uh, everything looked appropriate. Uh, the second one um, was on a 40-year-old man in the subway wearing a white t-shirt. And it looked like he was wearing a modern Submariner uh, date, uh, but I couldn't get too close uh, to confirm uh, whether it was real, uh, but it uh, did look uh, genuine. And the third Rolex I saw was on this person in his late 20s on the subway platform uh, waiting for a train and texting on his phone. He was wearing a BLNR on a Jubilee bracelet and he was right next to me and the Rolex looked real. So I straight up asked him, uh, do you ever feel concerned about wearing your watch out in the city? And he said he was from New York and he works in tech and he bought the watch from a great dealer. And he said uh, he had uh, no uh, concerns whatsoever about wearing the watch uh, anywhere in the city. Uh, he actually said he fell asleep overnight in the subway a couple of times and nothing ever happened. So he wears that watch uh, anywhere in the city. I'm still not sure I would be as carefree uh, with my GMT, but it does make me feel a little better about wearing my date just uh, more places. The next stop was uh, Madison Square Park and the original Shake Shack location. Uh, I visited this one also on my last visit, uh, but uh, this time it didn't live up to the memories, uh, partly because it was uh, too dark by the time I arrived and I couldn't see much of the park, and the food itself was just mediocre. Uh, I did like the beer. Uh, they have their own brew of ale, 
and it definitely tastes better than a typical Bud Light or Coors Light. Uh, it has a nice uh, distinctive flavor, uh, not too strong and not too bitter. Uh, so I really like that beer, but the cheeseburger and fries uh, didn't seem like anything special this time. And for my last stop, I wanted to see how comfortable I would feel with my Explorer in the middle of Times Square and at night. And this was just a madhouse, a crazy loud madhouse. Uh, just crowds of people packed on the sidewalks, uh, blaring noises and bright flashing lights and billboards. Uh, the definition of overstimulation. But I did get some shots of my Rolex uh, with Times Square in the background. Uh, let me know if I'm just crazy, but I still didn't feel concerned about someone grabbing the watch. But after this, I think I've had enough of Times Square and probably won't be going back there anytime soon. I think once you've seen it once, uh, that's enough. It's just too crowded and too noisy uh, to go back to. So coming back from my trip to New York, I've changed my mind somewhat about some of these watches. Uh, I still feel like a Rolex is made to be worn and I don't think uh, that uh, you should let fear uh, keep you from uh, wearing the watches out in public. As far as wearing it in a city like New York, uh, I think the Explorer um, was uh, appropriate and totally fine. And uh, now I think uh, almost any of my Datejust uh, and my Oyster Perpetual uh, would have been fine uh, to wear uh, in the city. I think I might draw the line at uh, yellow gold uh, or my white gold GMT and I probably still wouldn't be comfortable wearing those uh, in New York. Let me know in the comments if I'm just totally off base and being too carefree about safety and what's your limits about when and where you would wear your Rolex. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.